All right, everybody, welcome back to Rick Abramson's Layout Tour. This is going to be part two, and I hope you enjoyed uh, part one. If you have not seen part one, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. And what we're looking at here is a AC power sectionalizing panel. And this shows which catenary is live and which isn't. And to make it simple for you, the red lights indicate that the catenary is live, and the green lights indicate that the catenary is not live. So now on this layout, the power comes from the tracks. So the catenary is basically for a visual effect to show the realism of this layout. This uh, panel shows the interlockings on the main line. All right, so as we move along, the panel that you see in front of you is the dispatcher panel. And the smaller panel off to the right there uh, controls the signals at Burke Junction and other areas of the layout. Now, this layout is completely DC powered. So it's equipped with four cabs that you can unplug and plug in in various locations of the layout. But you do need a dispatcher uh, to run this layout. Now, the lights or the toggles with the LED lights, um, that is uh, represents the switches. Now green means it's lined in a normal route and anything that's in red is a diverting route. All right, so one last thing on the dispatching panel, uh, where we're pointing to is the blocks. Those are the toggles that control the blocks of the layout. They're also tied into the AC sexualizing panel. So they change the panel from green to red. All right, we're in Bridgeport, Connecticut on uh, Rick's layout. And what you're seeing here is a skewed bridge. If you take the train in Bridgeport, this bridge still exists. And trains used to travel under that bridge uh, from the lower yard to the Housatonic Avenue uh, switching area. We see the HH660 passing by Jenkins valves and it's heading over to the Bridgeport bulk track. Now we see the HH660 going down to uh, Bridgeport Harbor to uh, pick up a car. So right now we're at Bishop Avenue. Now in Bishop Avenue, we have a uh, switching tower there and we also have an anchor bridge. Now this anchor bridge was scratch built by Rick and it features a lot of tremendous detail to include the 3D printed circuit breakers that are on top. Now, being that this is an electric railroad, it is very difficult to get in and zoom in uh, because there are literally wires everywhere between catenary and then overhead power. So you can see the tremendous detail that's in this and uh, it's definitely uh, one of the best I've ever seen.
and as we move along uh, on this video tour, uh, one thing I do want to point out is that since the move, since this layout was moved, uh, there is still construction going on, um, and you're going to see some fascia that's not installed yet. But this layout is undergoing expansions as we speak, and uh, there will be some more videos coming out showing that. As we continue on with the tour, the, uh, the rail line that's closest to the edge of the layout, that is called the Berkshire, and that travels all the way to the other side of the layout, which we will show you in a little bit. But what I want to point out to you is this line here, that is the Seaview Avenue branch, and that goes right into street running, which we're going to see in a little bit. And we should see a an electric motor coming down from CU Avenue anytime now. Scrap yard here uh, on Seaview Avenue. Now, this the name of the scrap yard is called Jacob Brothers, and it was an actual prototypical building or prototypical business uh, that was once uh, served by rail in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Another example of a prototypical business that once was in Bridgeport, Connecticut is Singer Sewing Machines and uh, it is represented very well in this layout. And as we approach Seaview uh, Avenue, um, another example of a prototype a prototypical business that once was in Bridgeport is Bridgeport Concrete, which is represented here uh, in the form of a Walther's kit. And you can see the uh, electric motor sitting there uh, in the street. And this section of the layout was definitely uh, my introduction to Rick's layout. It was my first section of the layout that I operated on. And this is where I started my fascination with street running. So uh, thank you, Rick. All right, so when I first operated on Seaview Avenue, we did not have any catenary here, and recently Rick added catenary to this section of the layout. Definitely realistic, and definitely this definitely can be a challenge to switch out. And uh, I learned this the hard way. It's very important to make sure you block your train correctly when you come down here. Uh, it's, it's a nice little area to switch, but it can be challenging. And 
as we leave Seaview Avenue now, we're looking at Derby right now. And right behind, we have Derby Station. And right behind that, we have Derby Junction. And now we're in Maybrook, New York. So what we're looking at here is the engine facilities for Maybrook. And we have Maybrook Yard. Now this is the main yard that most of the uh, freight originates from and uh, definitely a great area to switch out block your train and we also have a ice house to switch out as well Now we have a couple of GP9s heading up to Maybrook and watch the signal drop. Now this section of the layout, this is actually the first time that this is being shown. Uh, in the old location, there was a wall here. So, and this is the only time you're gonna see this footage because since this video was uh, taken, uh, there has been an expansion actually where I was standing. And the same train is proceeding to go across the diamond at Seaview Avenue and go under the main. So in this final video segment, you're going to see this train with two GP9s coming down to Berkshire. And you're going to see it go past Bishop Avenue. And then go across the Diamonds up the Noggy, also known as the West Leg of the Y. Now I want to thank everybody for watching this video. And watch out for part three, which is going to be in progress very soon. So thanks again and enjoy the rest of the video.